Hello and welcome to Immortal Realms Vampire Wars. If you've missed the previous series where we focused on the Dracul, then you can take a look at the description and there will be a link to that playlist. If you'd also like to check out the game, then there is also a link there for the Steam Store page. So for this particular little series here, because I don't think it will take that long to actually win with the Maroya, because this is the spellcaster magic based faction. They all have very unique play styles, and uh, well, we've played as the Nosfernus with the first impressions video that I created a while ago, and then we had a, a small series with the Dracul where we actually did achieve something very cool, and the Maroya are the ones that we haven't really played yet. So uh, let's do it. And look at this we get a whole bunch of wonderful spells that we can use and any unit killed provide uh, provides their tiers worth of mana very important also attacks deal magic damage and ignore armor values so that means that they're really good against basically every single unit except those with magic protection which reduces the amount of damage that uh, they take from magic damage uh, attacks and things like that by 50 percent anyway that's what we're going to be doing. Lords have plus 50% mana, but no passive regeneration can turn mana into blood. That is the main resource gaining thing that we're going to be having to focus on here. And we're also going to be playing on the Maroya's own map, because of course there are four maps, one generic one, and then three that are more to do with each of the factions. So we'll play on this one. And I am actually going to be playing on a different win condition this time around. I will be playing on Ascendancy, reaching clan level 20, should be up the Maroya's alley. And we will now be starting the game. All right, so here we go. If you have not seen the previous series, I'd recommend checking it out because I do tend to go over some of the basic mechanics of the game. And I might actually go over a little bit of it in uh, this first episode. If, uh, if there's something new that I haven't covered before, that is. Anyway, we have Force Migration. Sacrifice is, is fantastic. Recruit Maroya is going to be really important here as well. So now here's the thing. What I am going to want to do... Oh, this is perfect. Thirst for Power is great. Revitalize is fantastic. And I think we are also going to be taking Nightmare as well for the enemy Maroya or just in general using this ability on enemy lords to drain their mana so that they can't use as many spells very very good idea so we start with minus two blood what are we gonna do about that guys what are we gonna do well uh yeah i think we can pretty much easily deal with this so i'm just gonna recruit some maroya here and we're gonna be recruiting apprentices that is literally the only unit i'm going to be using until we unlock tier two fencers are good don't get me wrong fencers are really really good but they use physical damage and generally are quite fragile. As you can see right here, they have 85 HP in comparison to the apprentices that have 100. So these guys, in my opinion, are going to be the way to go. So we are just going to be recruiting one of those. We're also going to be spending the next action point because you only have three action points per turn, dependent on what you are, um, what you're given, you know, and sometimes you can construct some things as well. For example, this gives you plus one action point when starting their turn. So we're gonna build that at the keep because we're gonna be staying around the keep for a little bit of time just while we build up our army very slightly here. And uh, bear in mind that we have a village over here which is giving us plus one blood every single turn. But again, this is not the main reason why you want to be capturing villages or anything like that. Basically villages are kind of, uh, I don't wanna say pointless, for the Maroya, but I would say that they are less useful, shall we say, than for the other factions. For example, the Nosfernus, they rely on villages being very quick to replenish themselves so that they can continue feeding on the populace. Whereas for the Maroya, the way that they deal with blood and gaining blood and things is by consuming their mana. So you can see here we have Elizabeth Maroya right here. She has 85 mana on the right side. We're going to have to take much more note of these things on the right in this series because with the Dracul, we didn't really have to worry about that too much because mana and things like that doesn't really make any difference to them that much. So we're going to be consuming mana and gaining some blood. Same again. And then we'll be uh, performing a ritual that restores our mana, and then we'll be doing more blood. And then as a result, we have completed our quest. 
<laughs> pretty quick, right? Yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy. And we now have 82 blood. We've gained a little bit of experience and everything. And I would also probably want to go for Thirst for Power. Four units in the army are going to gain some veterancy. So we'll probably try to do that as well. Uh, we might as well do that. Just to kind of give a little bit of a, an increase. And then we will continue onward. And again, we're not running around. We're not wanting to really conquer anything just yet. Because I need to make sure that our army is as powerful as it possibly can be. And now we're going to see... Feed, no. Kill human units in enemy armies. Well, that's maybe not so... I don't think that's that easy, personally, but we'll try it. Don't think that's really going to work out too well for us. Okay, so otherwise, once again, we're just going to be restoring our mana. Restoring our mana, restoring our mana. We might as well revitalize while we are at it. And we also now have three AP, so we will be able to get some more apprentices. And let's continue to do that. There we go. And I have one more action point. And there we have it. All right. So now we have minus eight per turn, which again is still not a big deal. This is just the strategy that I think works the best for the Maroya. Because even though I'm not gaining territory in any way, shape or form, I am uh, creating a very strong army that will pretty much be able to beat or should be able to beat most early game armies that the enemy could potentially come at us with. So let's just do, uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, so this guy, he's probably going to be significantly less powerful than we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit more mana and then we're going to move over there and attack him straight up. Just going to attack him. As you can see, certain victory. We're going to auto-resolve that because generally what I will tend to do in this series, what I learned from the Dracul series as well, is that if there's any auto-resolve that basically says to you certain victory or close victory or something like that, you can pretty much just auto-resolve that and you can be relatively sure that you won't lose too many units as a result of it. And that's the thing. If there isn't a, a sort of victory statement in the uh, in the uh, battle screen you know then you will probably want to fight manually because otherwise it's going to be a bit problematic all right so i'm going to be actually taking arcane barrage here we're going to upgrade arcane barrage to reduce its mana cost to five reduce cooldown to two and increase range to nine sounds like a good plan to me and we will capture um, I, I want to capture the mana that's the main thing that i want to do at the moment and what we're going to do, as you can see right here, increase replenish mana gain by 25%. We're going to do that. Did I level up again? No, it seems like we, we are almost leveled up. Wait a minute, what? It says that, okay, apparently I need to gain some, I need to gain some experience very quickly so that we can gain, uh, get, get another level. It seems like uh, I have gained so much experience that it should have given me multiple levels, but apparently it didn't at this point, which is kind of a bit of a shame, but oh well, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Okay, so let's take this. This is really good. Uh, I would have actually appreciated getting that first before recruiting all my tier one units, but I suppose they don't cost that much anyway, so it's not really a big deal. And uh, what we're going to need to do is I would like to get the construction card. Stops enemies from moving into the target province for one turn. And Shady Deal, I suppose, are going to be kind of useful for us. I need construction so that when I actually have the opportunity to um, build my tier 2 buildings, it's not going to cost a huge amount of blood. So let's capture this. There we go. We've actually leveled up to... Uh, Legacy 3, and we're going to be doing this. Increase Blood Alchemy, Blood Gain by 20%. Now, here's the reason why I took the Experience Gain uh, win condition. This particular research. Increase Clan XP Gain by 10% per controlled library. Absolutely fantastic. Also, Alchemy Labs. Libraries give plus 2 blood points per turn and a variety of other things over here. Unlocks an action which allows lords to study the arcane at libraries for clan XP. 
and again and again and again. It just gives you basically more experience really, really nicely. And I very much appreciate that. But what we're going to be going for for now is the alchemy blood gain increase. And we're also going to be going for concentrated arcanum because this is going to increase our apprentices and elders attack by a certain amount. And that's really going to help us out quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now is we're actually going to be getting another Lord. So I'm not entirely sure which Lord to go for right here. I would like to be able to have one that has a huge amount of mana. So I'm hopeful uh, they all have 45. Well, that's kind of a shame, isn't it? Yes, that is actually kind of a shame. Uh, cost to buy library cards is minus 50%. I don't really care about buying anything from the libraries, to be honest. All units in the army get plus 100% XP gain. That seems pretty fun. And they have Arcane Barrage as well, so I guess I'm going to take this one. And then we will be, I guess, playing it over here. And uh, we do have a little bit that we can do. So let's, uh, let's just sacrifice a little bit of that. Gain a little bit of that. There we go. So we'll just gain a little bit of blood right there. And that's exactly the reason why we want that. So now that that is all done... I think we can go to the next turn. Now, the other thing with the Maroya is you've got to realize that if you have two keeps and you have two lords at those keeps, now here's the thing, you can't use your mana to blood conversion ability unless you're at one of your keeps. So you need to keep someone there at all times, in my opinion, to actually make it work um, the most efficient it can be so for example let me just claim this so that i can gain some more concentrated arcanum right there and we'll move uh, wishing stone i guess we'll move to the wishing stone and we'll just claim it and then maybe we can get ah unfortunate unfortunate okay so wait a second i'd like to see okay so she actually does need mana so i might actually just take 50 mana uh, usually I would not take that because I personally feel like gaining mana is not exactly fantastic in many respects. But yeah, I guess it's alright. And we're going to be taking mana veins once again. Going to try and be a little bit balanced in regards to those things. And then we'll probably go over here and do a little bit more claiming of the area. There we go. And he's actually leveled up. Fantastic. Okay, so let's get... Let's get slow, I suppose. I don't really mind about which cards he unlocks at this point. Okay, so pretty good, pretty good, right? Yeah, pretty good. Okay, and do I see any enemies in the in the in the little area here? I don't think so. Got to be a bit careful because this guy by himself will literally just get murdered. Like there, there really is nothing he can do about that. So now that we have a couple of areas around us right here. We can take a look at some of our unique units as well. For example, we have these automatons, which are unique to the Maroya, and I would love to be able to get the void-fused automatons. I mean, just look at how crazy they are. They have magic protection, they have spell immunity, they have 180 HP, they have 75 damage, they've got a massive amount of stuff, but they are very slow in terms of their movement and so on, so... It is a little bit difficult to use them uh, appropriately. So, well, we'll see what happens. Anyway, let's go over to the city here. We're going to claim it and we'll go. Ah, there's a library. Fantastic. That's great. Okay, so we're also going to go for channel. I I'd like to get channel and mana veins to three. They're going to be very important for us, at least at the moment. And now that we're at a city, can I actually use anything here? No, I can just heal myself. I could go to the library... I could... Oh, I can't really do anything else here, to be honest. I mean, let's actually have a look and see what other things we have here. I could do a little bit of upgrading. Should I do some upgrading? I don't know, personally. Uh, I think we'll go to... I think we'll go here, and then we'll claim that in the next turn. And as I've said, I personally feel like gaining territory for the Maroya is not necessarily the most important thing at the moment or at least for them in general, because the Dracul and the Nosfernus, they need to gain territory relatively fast to be able to get their feeding 
in the case of the Nosfernus up and running and for also to get the Dracul's passive blood income as much as they possibly can. Okay, so these guys are 122. We are 134. These are Maroya. And we are also Maroya. This is going to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to drain their mana a little bit here. I would like to attack them. But I'm also a bit worried. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to do this, but let's just do a little bit more draining here and then we'll gain some more blood. Look at that, 21 blood from one of those. Very nice to see that. And we might... Can I actually go over here? Mm, this is a bit... This is a bit problematic. I'm, I'd like to get rid of that fencer if at all possible. And then maybe we can go over to the cave and recruit... A, uh, an, on, an automaton because I think they're going to be really useful for us at least this one because it's going to act as kind of like a tank tanking unit because every single unit that we have is ranged with the exception of that one and obviously we had a fencer but the fencer is in my opinion not that good at tanking damage so you know it would be quite nice to see what happens there okay so I, I think I probably could have won against her, but I wanted to be a little bit cautious. So let's see what happens. All right, so let's have a look here. No, all units cost. Yeah, okay, reinforcements. We'll just go for that. Target army replenishes 40% mana. That sounds really, really good, actually. We'll take revitalize, we'll take this, and we'll take forced migration. And then we will go... I guess we could recruit a whole bunch of units, actually. Let's recruit some more apprentices for Daray. And we'll, we'll recruit three. And then we could do... I'm going to move, actually, because I'd like Elizabeth to actually start uh, draining her mana a little bit. There we go. 21. 21. And now I could use Well of Mana which would provide her with another, with 40%? With did, 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 did that actually give her 40%? I'm not entirely sure right now. Apparently not. Oh well, that's absolutely fine. Don't really mind about that too much. Okay, so let's see what uh, Katrina is going to do here. She might actually decide to attack Dare. Yep, she is indeed doing that. Unfortunately, as you can quite clearly see, that is going to be an absolute defeat. Uh, I could go in and try to do as much damage as I possibly can to her. And I think I might actually do that. Just so that we can reduce their combat strength by a certain amount. It's, it's obviously not going to be... There's, no, there's going to be no chance, pretty much, for me to achieve any kind of victory here. But we can try. You know, we can try and we can maybe do a little bit of a, an arcane barrage or something like that. I mean, that might make sense. Okay, so we're just going to move everyone to the back line. An arcane barrage. I can use that. So what we're going to be doing is literally just skipping turns as much as we possibly can and utilizing aimed shot, utilizing arcane barrage and everything else that we can. So that's pretty much it. That's my playstyle for this particular fight. It's not effective in the least because, of course... We're outnumbered by a considerable amount. They're actually kind of damaged, the enemy. So we might be able to take out a couple of them. And if we can, that's going to set them back a pretty significant amount because they obviously believe that they have the advantage here. And it's, it's, it's quite true, I suppose. It is quite true that they have the advantage, but in the grand scheme of things, if we're able to eliminate a couple of them, I think we'll have a decent, decent shot. Yeah, they're reducing my movement speed with that blizzard, which is really not going to do anything. I don't particularly care about that, to be honest. No, we're not moving, that's for sure. Much. Anyway, we're just going to use some regular attacks here. And now, because of my apprentices having that additional damage bonus from my research, it is making things a little bit easier for us. I could use Arcane... Can I use Arcane Barrage? Yes, I can use Arcane Barrage, but I don't really want to use it on one target, if at all possible. I'd like to use it on multiple targets for the most value we can possibly get. So hopefully we'll be able to do that as they start moving forward towards us. We serve it. Ooh, perfect, perfect. Okay, that's some. That's a night... That's in range right there. That is great. Blood. 
There we go. Oh, this, this guy's in range. There we go. Okay, yeah, we can attack that as well. It, and now, here's the thing. This is obviously just a, a kind of sacrificial um, standpoint that I'm having here. But we are taking out a couple of them. Oh, there we go. There, there comes Lightning Strike. That's going to do quite a bit of damage, as you can see. And I'm hopeful that I will be able to use Arcane Barrage now. And, ooh, yeah. That's some, that's some good damage, you know? That's some pretty good damage. I think that's the best we can probably hope for, hitting three targets with that. And... Uh, should we try and kill the enemy lord? We might we might be able to if we don't lose another one of our units. Or I could try and just do some damage. I'm going to just try and kill that one. Just try and kill that one. Get it out the way. Ooh, we're, we're, we're kind of hanging on a little bit, you know? We're hanging on a little bit. I mean, this is the exact reason why I wanted to go in and manually fight. Because the auto resolve is pretty much just going to um, hand them the win. That's pretty much how it's going to go. So, didn't really want to do that. Firestorm. Ooh, she's using a lot of uh, pretty cool abilities, actually. And uh, we're done. That's it. That's it. So we were able to do some decent damage, but nothing too dramatic. Obviously, as you know, this is just... This is, there's nothing I could do about that. There's really nothing I could do about it. She wanted to attack us, and that is exactly what she did, which is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that, because now my other army, because we've taken out three of her forces, we should quite easily be able to run her down, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So there you go, certain victory, boom, lost no one, we gained some experience, we've gotten the next legacy level, which is exactly what we wanted, and we're also going to be increasing replenish mana, and now we have 75% mana gain from that, which is really very nice. Okay, so uh, we also have Elizabeth leveling up here, we're going to be taking Dominate as an upgrade, and we're going to be probably doing uh, minus 50% initiative. That basically means that they are much slower to move in the turn order, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to just move her back here. Actually, should I do a little bit of constructing? Don't really want to, to be honest. So we're going to just stay around here. And we will do this. And we will do this. There we go. All right. Perfect. That is absolutely fine. Now, the more that I just basically stand here and just kind of lure the enemy in, the stronger that we're actually going to get. It's actually kind of strange, really. It's a, a pretty cool, unique way of playing. And I do like that about the Maroya. I think they're very fun to play. And there you go. All right, so that's pretty good. Now, I do want to unlock Tier 2 units relatively quickly, so I'm thinking we'll probably try to do something about that once we get DeRay back up and running. So, I think now that we have a decent amount of blood, we should be able to go to other places. Ah, oh, here we go. Hello. There's a Nosfurnus. Now, a Nosfurnus, they very much rely on a lot of units, and I'm very much hoping that we will be okay to... Uh, fight them. Let's actually have a look. Ooh, they have a very small army. This is good. Okay, let's see. Let's go over here first. Let's get, uh, let's get DeRay summoned. And, uh, oh, it doesn't have any action points. That's kind of sad. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so we'll head on over here. And we will attack. Certain victory. Oh, yes. Give me that. Thank you very much. There you go, we got another legacy level, so I can now go for another point in mana veins. And once again, I'm going to need to get artificial ley lines and then elites to be able to unlock tier 2 buildings. But we also do need to get this eventually. We don't need to get this right away. That's not something that we need to rush for or anything like that. Tier 2 units, however, are a little bit more important in my opinion at the moment. So let's just capture this. And I don't believe... No, he doesn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. DeRay can't do anything else, unfortunately. So let's see what happens now. Because what I would like to do... Ooh, here we go. Ooh, this is perfect. This is a wonderful, wonderful ruling right here. Yeah, this is great. And we'll go for Term of Knowledge, Recruit Maroya, and Well of Mana. Sounds like a fun yearly draw right there. And we're also going to be... Gaining some apprentices for Daray's army. 
as many as we can get our hands on, basically. As many as we can get our hands on. That's exactly what we want. And let's use Recruit Maroya here, because we can actually stretch it a little bit more. And we also want to go for Term of Knowledge. That gives us 200 experience. And we'll also go for mm, probably that on Elizabeth. And now she's going to use this. Hopefully she will gain. Yeah, there we go. She's going to gain some mana. She has 34 right now, but we want her to have even more than that. So let's get her another 50 mana. That's just crazy. The amount of gain that you can get from that is just really, really good. And we're gaining 125 XP from that. We're almost next, uh, next clan tier as well. Very important to gain that as Maroya, especially considering our win condition, of course. Okay, so now we can restore some health and mana here. I think I'm going to do that for Mr. DeRay or Mrs. I'm not entirely sure which one, to be honest. And let's see. We can heal. We can get some more mana. Or we can just recruit another unit. I think I'm going to just recruit another unit. And there you go. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay, so now we have another enemy. Oh, the Dracul are coming in here. Okay, these guys are going to be actually kind of a bit difficult. They are full. Are those... Are those Dracul Half-Bloods? If those are Dracul Half-Bloods, I think we might have an issue. I think we might have an issue here. So I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to win against that, but okay. Guess we'll try it out and see what happens. Okay, so we've leveled up. There we go. Let's get over here. We're going to we're gonna need to get elites. We're going to need to get elites relatively fast now. Because I'm a bit worried about the fact that uh, this guy is uh, running around with, with half-bloods. Because if he has half-bloods, that's really, really bad. So, might be a bit of a problem. Yeah, might be a bit of a problem. I'm actually going to be playing Arcane Storm here to prevent him from moving over to this province. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit worried about that actually. Okay, so let's get some more mana. Let's try and get some more blood as a result of this. There we go. And uh, that's the thing. As long as you have one Lord of the Maroya at one of your keeps, you should be perfectly fine. This guy is going to absolutely dominate everyone. I think. I think he's going to be very very powerful and and very difficult to deal with. So I don't know how we're going to do it, but. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so uh, my quest is to play 10 cards. Okay, yeah, that's probably not going to work out too well for me at the moment. But I guess we'll try it. Okay, so let's go for a little bit more, a little bit more mana here. And I'd like to, uh, I really wish I had clairvoyance now. You see, that's exactly the reason why you, you, you might want to take clairvoyance every so often. Let's see what else we can get here. Mounted, mounted, mounted. Okay, yeah. So they're actually pretty cool. I should probably get another Lord, if I'm honest. So let's get another Lord. Aha, this guy. We're going to get this guy. This sounds pretty good to me. Yes, there we go. Delano, Delano. Yes, very good. Join me, sir. Fantastic. Okay, so now let me move over here. I mean, we're pretty strong, so I don't know whether I should really be that scared of this guy. He has 128, we have 139, and he does have... Yes, he does have half-bloods, as I thought. That's going to be very tricky for us to deal with, I think. If he decides to attack us, which he's not, okay, that's actually pretty advantageous, I think. Because if he had decided to attack us right there, I think I probably would have had a bit of a problem. All right. So we're going to con continue just uh, recruiting as many uh, apprentices as I can possibly get with Dare right here. And then I will be moving on in the next turn. We do need to get Delano uh, summoned as, as quickly as possible as well. So let's just capture that village. And I think that is pretty much all I wanted to do. There we go. Uh, now, technically, I, I do understand that if I were to use Elizabeth as our main blood getting conversion unit, then it would be much, much easier. 
um, for us to, you know, gain gain blood and things like that. But I kind of wanted to make it so that the unit that is back there is not that useful. Don't tell him or her that. But yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to do to try and uh, make it just that little bit easier for us to expand. Summons a gargoyle warrior unit from the target library. Sounds like a fun idea. Let's see if I can get some additional housing here. Additional growth. And we'll move into the keep over here, just ready for us to capture it in the next turn. I have also just done a little bit of mana getting, I suppose you could say. And then we will go on to the next turn. And I think we're doing pretty well in terms of our legacy level, but obviously we're going to need to be a bit quicker uh, about the whole thing, in my opinion at least. So let's go over to the village here. And then we can actually summon Delano because we have a full army here. So that is perfectly fine. And now he can actually sacrifice some of his mana to just get us up to 73 again. It's pretty crazy how fast you can do it with someone that has a decent amount of mana in total. Because you can see here that it replenishes 20%, 26% of max mana. So the more mana you have, the more it replenishes. And because the Blood Alchemy uses a flat value of mana that is the way to go so if you you know for example if i had elizabeth back here it would be super super easy for us to do that but of course she's she's at another keep now so now i can get double the amount of uh double the amount of blood again and again and again which is actually fantastic so i'm pretty happy with this anyway we're going to go here and we're going to do a bit of an upgrade going to start upgrading our cities and upgrading our villages now because of course we have enough blood to be able to do that and I think I probably want to awaken. Oh no, I can't do that yet because we don't have the. Oh yeah, we don't have the library over there. I was re very much hoping that I'd be able to give the li um, library. No, give the gargoyle to our new guy Delano because that would probably, uh, probably do quite quite a good job. You know, probably do quite a good job there. Okay, so I guess because we can't do that, I will just continue to do this. We'll just continue to get apprentices summoned. And bear in mind that they do have a bit of an upgrade, so they are slightly better than usual. You know, they're going to be all right with doing whatever they can. And let's do a little bit more upgrading here. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So now what we probably want to do is we probably want to take DeRay over here, probably try and get him to just expand our territory a little bit as well. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to get order signed in blood so I can get an additional AP and so I can continue to get blood again and again. And now we are going to be attacked by the Dracul here, I think. They're probably going to do this. They're going to attack our city or capture it. And we are having a couple of difficulties with our blood situation now because I have kind of overextended a little bit. So let's, uh, let's just be a bit careful about that. So, yeah, we're going to need to be a bit wary of it. Because here's the thing, if that if that Dracul guy comes over here, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Okay, let's capture this. Uh, the blacksmith could be very useful for us. But I think, we're, I think we're pretty good. I think we're pretty good with how it's going so far, with the exception... Oh, hello there. Certain defeat? This guy's got Veteran 3. And he's also got Tier 3 units. What a crazy guy. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just try this and we'll see what we can do. Because I personally feel like I might do okay here. You know? I don't think we'll uh you know embarrass ourselves a significant amount at least. Deal damage to rank up. Okay, I'm perfectly happy with that. DeRay seems to always have these terrible, terrible uh situations where he he's just always in these areas where he just continually gets attacked okay so let's see if we can do this uh we're gonna actually swap there we go there we are all right so we're gonna do something like this it's gonna be really really boring <laughs> it is not I, I i'm i never try to be aggressive with maroya or at least i personally feel like being aggressive with maroya is a mistake 
because what they are good at is ranged attacks. And if you go close to the opponent, they have more opportunities to damage you. And so as a result, staying back, allowing them to come to you, that, in my opinion, is the way to go. Especially considering this guy actually has a number of archers, and they're going to need to move into our range before they can deal damage to us. Which is perfect. Is Absolutely life. perfect. Now, of course, AoE attacks that the enemy has life are going to be magic. quite devastating. But we also have our own AoE. You know, we've got Arcane Barrage. Uh, there we go. Here's Apocalypse. Yeah. Whoa, that was some damage. Look at that. Three units in the area are dealt 65 damage. That costs 12 mana. He has a significant amount of mana at the moment as well. I'm actually very impressed. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Okay, we're going to use aimed shot on this guy. Because I can. We serve and we're going to use aim shot on this guy. Because, again, I can. Oh, yes. We're going to try and eliminate this guy as, as quickly as we possibly can do. And we are going to be, of course, leveling ourselves up as well. We're going to be gaining uh, Lord Attack, Assassins gaining Regeneration, Archers gaining Ethereal. That doesn't really help us that much. So, yeah, that doesn't really help us that much. But we've just eliminated a Tier 3 unit without really having done anything, to be honest. And the Aimed Shot ability has a two-turn cooldown. So the faster that we can get that back, the more effective we're going to be in the future. So that's something to bear in mind. It's all to do with strategy, you know? It's all to do with strategy. So we can actually start doing some damage to these archers now. And I can actually use aimed shot against them too. And another aimed shot against them. And boom, archer's dead. There you go, done. Archer's dead. Unfortunately, no one else is in range of this particular unit, so can't do anything here. Uh, DeRay does not actually have anything that they can do. As you can see, I could do some damage there, but that doesn't really do anything at all. So we're just going to be leaving it alone for the moment. Okay, who, who is this guy? Oh, this is this guy's a blood mage. Oh, that makes sense. That makes a huge deal of sense. Okay, so let's see. Can I do some damage? I can do some damage to the Lord, but I don't know whether I really want to. I feel like it might be a waste. Uh, I could slow them. Spearman. Let's slow the Spearman down then, I suppose. Oh, he's moving close. He's attacking with melee? I... What the... Oh my. Whoa, okay. Hello. He used Earth... What? What are these abilities? These abilities are crazy. Crazy powerful. Okay. Well, uh, whatever the case, we are going to have a pretty easy time uh, killing this guy, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we should be able to deal with him, no problem at all. And I have I have aimed shot back, so I should be able to use it against him. There we go. Let's just use my regular attack here. And this is exactly the reason, by the way, why this is a really good strategy with the Maroya. It may be boring, but it is effective. You know, because just look at look at this. I just killed the Lord, and he's really hard to kill. He had 170 HP, but he just couldn't do anything against how much uh, damage we have all stacked up here, you know? That's the that's the main thing that you got to consider. Okay, so let's just do some damage to the Half-Bloods. And of course, the front line is completely protecting the back line. So even if the front line gets killed, you're still going to have damage that is capable of being done. And look at this. I can now do some damage with Arcane Barrage. Boom, 35 damage to all those guys right there. We serve eternal. Unfortunately, we're just out of range. Just out of range. Very, very close. These guys are going to do a massive amount of damage. Yeah, they're enraged, as we know. We know from the Dracul series that uh, Half-Bloods are really, really good at uh, doing damage. But we still haven't lost any units. Let me just remind you, we still have not let, lost any units whatsoever. I can do some damage to the archers with aimed shot. And we can do some damage to those spearmen over here. And we can do some more damage with aim shot. I'm going to probably try to kill those archers. And there we go. Oh, that's not a kill, unfortunately. Not enough damage there. Uh, I feel like that's a waste. 
Who's the next one that can that, that can move? Let me actually just have a look. This one. I don't think this one is in is it in range? I don't know whether it has uh, aimed shot available, but I'm gonna I'm gonna chance it. Ooh, doesn't have aim shot available. Okay, well, my bad. My bad. We're gonna take some damage as a result of that, unfortunately. It's only 20 damage, though, so I don't think that's really too big a deal. And we've got to really burn down the spearmen, I think. The spearmen are going to be kind of problematic. Right. Okay, yeah, there we go. I don't know why they moved the archers in. What, 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 what is this? Why did you move the archers so close, sir? That is a bit weird. Okay, well, we're going to slow down the Spearman once again. Just continue using the slow again and again. And then we will just attack the archers close by to us. We'll kill the archers over there. Boom. And can I... No, I can't reach them, unfortunately. So we'll just do damage here. Ooh, really? Didn't die? Okay. That's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? That was really unfortunate. Okay. Well, everything life. seems to be going nicely so far. Again, we still have not lost any units, which is extremely uh, beneficial because you saw what the auto resolve said, right? It said certain defeat, right? I think it said certain defeat. Yeah, I think so. And just look at what's happening. Just look at what is happening. Just just purely for the fact that this 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 strategy right here is cheap. It is super, super cheap, but that is exactly what you're going to have to do as Maroya, in my opinion at least, uh, to begin with, to win these kinds of battles. Because, let's face it, you, you're not going to win if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, Drakul. They are too powerful in melee combat. They have units that are way too strong in in their armaments and their their health and their their life stealing abilities for you to be able to win in straight up combat Knowledge at least in my ours. opinion of course you you might have a differing opinion to me you might think that this is uh, an absolutely terrible uh, strategy but Life it is effective is and that is generally the case in warlike situations you are generally going to have to do things that are effective, but maybe not so fun. So, <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, enemy archers are going to be doing now, because they, they seem to just be shooting at us. The blood gives us power. Which is... Mm, not, not great, I gotta say. None shall withstand our magic. So I'm not uh, we can actually reach some of them from here for some reason. Magic is the light. There we go. Magic Anyone else? We light. we can't reach we can't reach the archers. I wanna see what these archers move to, because if they Yeah, there we go. They're actually moving towards us. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's do some damage with my arcane barrage. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that much damage, but it has a very small cooldown. And uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, the way that the uh, mana cost is also reduced is really, really good. So I'm happy with that. Let's continue to do aimed shot. You know, if I, if I literally win this without losing any units whatsoever, I will be very surprised. Because I would have expected us to lose at least half of our forces. Ooh, I actually just made a mistake right there. Did you see that? Yeah. Ooh, that was uh, maybe not so good, but thankfully I have slowed the spearmen now. So even if the spearmen do come towards us, uh, we should have a pretty easy time of things. I'm basically just slowing them down and making it uh, making it kind of impossible for the opponent to really do anything to us. And just getting our aimed shot back up every single time. That's that's generally what I'm what I'm trying to do here. Okay, unfortunately, she can't reach. Blood is magic. She can. There we go. Uh, she can with aimed shot. I hope that we'll be able to kill the spearman before it actually reaches us. Wonder whether I can actually move and then attack. I don't think you can actually do that. Nah, you can't do that. That's kind of unfortunate. But we should be able to kill them before... There we go, before they reach us. And done. There you go. Done. And we literally lost 
none. Yeah, exactly what I was talking about. We lost none. So generally that kind of strategy, stacking up and making it so that the enemy has to come to you, very effective indeed. And look at this. We lost no one whatsoever when they said that we were going to lose this almost certainly. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy right there. All right. So now we've leveled up a pretty significant amount and we have another Dracul party coming in. Whoa, these guys have tier three. These guys have tier three. Likely victory. Whoa, okay. Likely victory. Sure. There you go. Likely victory. I'll lose one apprentice. I'm perfectly happy with that. I have no problem losing one. That is actually kind of amazing. Okay, so let's have a look here. All units cost 10% less to recruit or tax the libraries. Mm, I think we'll tax the libraries. And we're going to inspire the troops. We're going to take uh, Arcane Storm, Sabotage, I suppose. That seems pretty good to me. All right, so we have leveled up. Let's get tier two finally. Whew, that took a while, didn't it? Yeah, that took a while. All right, and we have another point as well. So I'm actually going to be starting to go for finality uh, projects right there, finality projects. And we will probably end this episode off here, actually. I got a bit carried away, you know? It's got that uh, one more turn feeling. Yes. If you'd like to check out the game, there's a link in the description. If you'd like to check out the previous series featuring the Dracul, then there is also a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.